Rob Seco, Future Farm. Today's innovations, tomorrow's solutions. All right, Jim. We're talking about building the foundation, and one of the important aspects of that is residue management. And, you know, through my career in the seed industry, I remember hearing about residue management, but not like you hear about it today. It seems more critical. And why is that? You know, a lot has progressed since you started your career in the seed industry. <laughs> okay. <you know. laughs> yields right. have gone way up, and, and in order to get those yields, you actually have to plant <laughs> a lot more plants per acre. So you know what that creates? is more residue. With every bushel of corn that you produce, you're producing about 44 pounds of residue on that on each acre. You know, I remember when we used to plant 15,000 per acre. Mm -hmm. We thought that was a lot and it's nothing today. Well, mm -hmm. good. Well, what are some of the methods? You know, how do we how do we uh, manage this residue? Yeah, so, you know, there's on a 200 bushel crop, you have to manage about 9,000 pounds of residue. And so there are a lot of different ways to manage residue. There's, there's basically two extremes. There's one extreme that is conventional tillage, where you're basically making multiple tillage passes in order to incorporate that residue into the soil where it'll break down faster and not be a nuisance as you're planting your next crop. On the other end, there is no-till where you basically don't do anything about that residue and you plant into the soil uh, trying to avoid the majority of that uh, residue to, to get the best seed establishment. Now both sides have their issues. Conventional tillage, you're actually degrading your soil health by exposing that soil, uh, reducing the amount of organic matter, mm -hmm. less biological activity. Mm -hmm. But on the other end, with no-till, you're actually decreasing the performance of the seed you plant because it takes a longer period of time for that soil to warm up. You're also decreasing seed to soil contact because you may get hairpinning where you plant through residue and that seed actually doesn't contact the soil because it's, it's hairpinned between the residue. So we have to look at other ways to manage this. So there's, there have been some innovations in this area, right? And, mm -hmm. and tell, us about, uh, tell us about that innovation. Yeah, so some of the innovations in this area is actually using biology to help us manage the residue. And so we can use products that deliver live bacteria, a consortium of bacteria to help break down that residue. And products like residue release would be one of these yeah. products. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is in the fall after harvest or sometime in the early spring, apply residue release or one of these biological products to the residue on top of the soil and over time it'll start to break down the carbon backbones within the residue. Well we can actually see an example of that here right I mean on this side well this side actually is the untreated portion this mm -hmm. is a farm that's maybe what uh, five miles west of here mm -hmm. and this side used uh, was applied uh, residue release and you see the difference in degradation I mean it's pretty dramatic. That's exactly And uh, there's some real benefits. You know, an interesting story about residue release is the two microbes in there that break down residue were identified for the oil industry and used in the oil industry to break down oil spills. Well, residue is carbon just like oil is carbon, and so they both work for the same purpose. Right. And so you're breaking down a lot of that residue earlier, and that's going to help you in a number of different ways. You're managing that residue so you're getting a better planting. Oh, you may be reducing actually a tillage pass. You might not yeah. have to till the field. You might get away with one fewer pass. You might not have to make any passes at all. But you're also making it easier to plant into that field and getting a more uniform stand that may be more vigorous and you're going to maximize your yield in that uh, respect as well. Well, I think we've seen cases where the, the actual emergence side by side, you not only get more uniform emergence, but you get more plants. Mm -hmm. And the examples we have, and it's not extensive yet but are about 10 percent difference that's exactly and that's uh, that's dramatic isn't it oh absolutely that makes a huge difference in yield potential when you're adding 10 percent more plants that are uniform you're going to maximize yield but that's really only two-thirds of the equation because actually there is a lot of nutrients tied up in that residue i mean picture a 200 bushel corn that's 9,000 pounds of residue and within that 9,000 pounds of residue there are 90 pounds of in there are 18 pounds of P2O5, and there are 104 pounds of potash. And that's a oh, lot that's to a tie lot. up. Yeah, that is a lot to tie up. And, and the sooner you can make that available for the crop, the sooner it can really, it can utilize it and, and benefit from it, right? That's exactly right, because this, this residue is going to break down over a period of time, but if it breaks down too late in the season, let's say 
you know, during dent or later in the, the year, you're really not getting any benefit from that. But if you can get a portion of that to break down early enough in the season, especially right around that, uh, that V5 period, when the plant is starting to establish what its yield potential is going to be, then you're really going to maximize what you get out of that field. Well, also in this product, you have six microbes that, that mineralize uh, organic matter mm -hmm. and uh, into a more available nutrients, which there's some real benefits with that also. That's exactly. It's not just the residue, but it's also organic matter in the soil. And you really want to take advantage of that organic matter, and, and having that available means you're going to create more organic matter for the next year because you're producing a bigger crop. So if you really want to build a great foundation, you know, managing that residue in a more friendly manner, mm -hmm. soil biology friendly manner, is really a great way to do it, isn't it, John? That's exactly right, and that's what the innovation we need to focus on is.